here somewhere. <clears throat> anyway, um, thank you all. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Thank you all so much for coming and uh, to our workshop today that uh, Jeff Watt and I have done a couple times um, talking about how to offer digital badges in um, your own lab or your own facility. And um, what I wanna do, and I apologize to those of you who have heard this talk before, um, but what I wanna do is give some background on <clears throat> why, why this work is important um, in this uh, day and age, partially because Sherry and I worked on a project with the National Governors Association and uh, it verified a lot of the work that I had done earlier in my research and on uh, what are the skills needed for new collar jobs. And I want to give some background. So for those of you who have <clears throat> not been here before, um, you are, um, uh, you'll get to hear it and those of you who have heard my talk can can do your email while while we're doing this um and and then i want jeff Wad to talk about <clears throat> um the conclude i'll come to the conclusions of my research and then <clears throat> uh my conclusion was that digital badges are um truly an answer to a lot of uh the uh or, or the solution to a lot of the education issues that are happening. And Jeff Wah can talk about what digital badges are <clears throat> and uh, what the platforms are and how we put them together. <clears throat> and, um, and then we'll transition back to me and I will talk about our specific solution within the digital badge <clears throat> um, possibilities that we came up with um, using Jeff Wah's platform. Um, there are other options, but there are very specific reasons why I wanted to take advantage of, of his work and, and the, the, the real advantage it gave us over a lot of the other things that are out there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try and uh, share my screen, huh? Well, oh, you know what? That's because I'm not on it. It's not been a good technology day. Um, here's PowerPoint. And I'm going to just get that set up. I'm going to go to slideshow. Still have to share the screen. Yeah, I know, but I want it to go to the full screen. Yeah, it's, it's thinking. <laughs> there it goes. Now I have to go back to Zoom. It never ends. Take it out of full screen. Yep. Yep. I know. Go back to Zoom. <clears throat> then we'll try share screen. It's still not. How about I just do share? I know this is so strange because we we did it this morning with no problem and we did it yesterday with no problem. Let me see if other things are open. It's kind of like the um, the computer took over and had a mind of its own. And just close out of stuff that's open. Okay, let's try this again. 
It's still coming back. Does it scroll up? No. I'm trying. And yeah, maybe Sarah, if it's not working or yet, uh, I can start about the badge context and then you present your research and then you present the, the project and we finish with the activity. Hang, hang on. Um, yeah. So weird. And it's playing music. I mean, it's just so strange. Well, that's okay because we got more people as we uh, waited. Yeah, we're now 54. That's very great. Thank you yeah, to be here with us good. for that. Um, yeah, I propose to, you have to maybe reboot your computer just to have a clean uh, cache uh, yeah. set up, maybe, if you don't be able right now to, to switch, to, to, to share your screen. Yeah, that is so weird yeah i'm gonna reboot my computer so i'm gonna go away for a minute so yeah. um uh alethea you're gonna have to let me back in i'll, I'll make sure to do that as soon as you get here then make okay. sure that you're the co-host as well Okay, everybody. So this, uh, sorry for that. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I, I will start because it's already 50 minutes. So we have, uh, we have time, but we have to start. So I will share my screen. I try, maybe <laughs> it's the same challenge for me. Wait, I will go there, share. There we go. So can you see my my first page? Are you great? Perfect. So uh, yes, my name is uh, Geoffroy garon Paul, and I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I'm a French Canadian or Quebecois, of course. Uh, and I'm working uh, a lot about digital innovation for a long time. So this is the, the, the workshop plan we, we see uh, before. So uh, uh, Sarah explained it. <clears throat> so. Uh, I'm a researcher and a practitioner for many years. Uh, for 15 years now, I'm in the digital innovations uh, sector or consulting in uh, different areas. So education, social, health, culture, SME. For 10 years, I'm working in uh, open innovation mindset and projects, kind of living lab, uh, fab lab, also blockchain uh, and AI a little bit. And for five years now, and this is my core business now, it's uh, in digital badges. So uh, I created a startup, uh, Pygmalion, uh, at that time in 2015 to, to be able to do my PhD in the same time. So think and do uh, digital badges. So I have a PhD co-direction. One is at UCAM in Montreal, it's in communication. And the other one is Anouis Abitson in uh, educational technology at Concordia. So the both of them is the organizational communication uh, field. And I'm working for now close to 10 years or collaborating with Communotic Ecofab, the first Fab Lab in Canada in 2011. We were supposed to be in Montreal this summer with the Fab 16, but our, we are online. But Communotic is there for 20 years about social inclusion, education, economy, digital fabrication, how to uh, involve people to, to be able to, to use them and to to make them. And we are the, uh, maybe with the Fab 17 will be in Montreal. We hope so in next year. And uh, Comotic offer Fab Academy since 2015. So this is EcoFab, the first one, uh, like I said, and it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a hub of innovation. So what is a digital badge? Uh, is clearly uh, from the scout movement, kind of micro credential, micro uh, training or micro certification. But now we are going digital and more about uh, data around a, a skill or, or an achievement. This is two quote from the Digital Credential Summit in 2019 uh, and uh, Chicago, I think. Uh, and uh, 
the, the question was, uh, what will it take to design a key, six, key 16 career economic driven ecosystem? And uh, the best response was by Chris Sturgis, is was the learning centered and competency based ecosystem with open badges. We, we go back on that standard as a common language, common design principle and commonly shared commitment. And also with uh, Wayne Skipper, uh, he, he talked about the badges for a long time and he worked uh, a lot with Concentric Sky. With the badge, you can generate and validate many different credentials and connect them on learning doing pathways using open pathways, for example. At the same time, I, I, maybe I just stopped to add new participant. Uh, so we're passing through uh, old school credential like de degrees to new school, but not, not to replace degrees, just to add more value around the degrees, but also, also inside the degrees. So it, the new school credential is to add value about soft skill, about uh, in, in, internship, about recognition of, uh, uh, of participation, of uh, tests, of uh, clubs, everything. So we can add more, uh, we can visualize and recognize what people are already doing, but they don't have proof or trace for that. So actually a badge, it's a, it's a standardized portable file, could be on a web page or an image that encapsulate rich information with structured data. Kind of rich information is about the description of this diploma or this certification. What, what those criteria, uh, there is a repository, a context, an evidence, an, an endorsement. All those are metadata attached to a certification. And it, because it's online, we can have those metadata. And to be sure to structure all that, we, we have to use a standard. And Mozilla Foundation uh, in 2011 uh, generate the open badge standard to actually generate that structure, that common language with metadata. And for now, we, uh, for close to 10 years, so the, the, the movement it was start. So a badge, of course, is kind of the, the, the top of the iceberg. It's, it's a picture and an image to represent the, the, the skill or the, or the path or the, the, the competency inside the program. But inside they have, like I said, the, the standard, so it's metadata, it's a JSON uh, file uh, and, and a sec secure one, encrypt one, to be able to uh, to use those data to discover and to share uh, and validate uh, skills or anything you want close to. So behind, this is the code of a badge. This is a badge the the back, back end, but in the front end is a picture and more information. So. With those badge, we need a, a system to manage those badge. So a uh, badge system, it's a web platform with the one part is the dashboard for the organization to create and grant digital badge. And the other part is the portfolio for learners or, or, or students or elders or if everybody can, uh, can receive a badge to store and manage. And of course, to share the badge online because now it's, it's a URL, a unique URL to be able to share uh, online. This is a, a path of uh, the issuer. So on the left side, you can see it could be a, a school, but could be a, any kind of organization. Uh, even a person can give a badge to another person. So it's 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 a credential and it's a peer to peer or structured to peer, et cetera, a strategy. So we have the issuer, then he, he give the badge or the, uh, the, uh, the issue the badge to the recipient. And in the portfolio, he can display and, and share to his, uh, to, to employers or college admission or, or, or any, anybody about like a friends or team working or, and all those is, can be verified. So this, uh, the, the, the badges standard uh, keep validating always the uh, the badge. It's not you. You cannot copy a badge. You receive it and and you have the the metadata on it. So this is an example of a badge portfolio. So we have a classic portfolio. We have a picture, the name, 
you have information, social uh, media, you have biography, and also the badge portfolio. So you have the list of this one. This, this is one an example. And when you click on one badge, you, yeah, you, you see the, 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 the badge or the diploma with the information, the title, the text, uh, the, the date, when it was issued, to who, by when, by who, to who. Uh, and one thing is very important with uh, the uh, digitalization of, of a diploma or skill, you can add proof on that skill. So when you click on the blue button on the right, it's in French, but it's, you can see evidence. Uh, it could be a PDF with inside a text, a picture, a link to anything out, so a video. Uh, and with that, you can encapsulate the context of learning and the context of that recognition. It could be one day, it could be one month, one full diploma program. So you can have the context of the uh, learning. And you can use badges in three different contexts. So you can use in academia, for sure, to motivate students, to uh, customize learning uh, and to be complementary. So it's more a co-curriculum approach in the uh, structure educational uh, sector, but you can also use badges in the workplace with uh, improved talent management and also in society. So more about open open space, uh, libraries, uh, more about fab lab, living lab, uh, and also e-learning. I just wanna look my time, perfect. So. And I, as a PhD student, I work a lot about how can we uh, use the badges. So we can evaluate, of course. E evaluation is one of the key points now for the next decade, maybe, because how can we connect people and be sure they are, they are, they have the real skill or they have the real, uh, the, the real, uh, the real uh, competencies or interest of something. So the tool is to evaluate for sure. But also we can use badges as a communicate uh, tool. So we have data inside, we have artifact portfolio mindset. And it's my, my, my purpose in my thesis is to work about the structure. How can we structure learning or organization or even ecosystem with the badge design approach? So we're passing from an authority to a credibility system or approach. And with that, when we generate badge uh, ecosystem or, uh, or, um, or, or group of connect uh, badges with organization, we have to work about what is the value of a badge. And a badge alone could be interesting, but it's not very powerful because we don't have this ecosystem and, and this standard or this connection between things. So when we talk about uh, trust, uh, is the triangle of trust, we have the issuer, the earner and the consumer. And all those three have to work together because people can go first about the issuer. So like organization, like a fab lab can issue badges, but you have to be, be sure what the earner need or is an interest to, but also what is the consumer needed. And so it's more about the, the workplace. What is the need of the workplace? So this triangle is very important to be able to design a good uh, ecosystem in specific sector. We'll see that uh, later. So a few examples, uh, IBM is one of the uh, biggest uh, IT enterprise. They're using badges for many years now. Like there was a, a, a real uh, uh, early adopter of that uh, approach. And they generate a lot of version already of those badges. So there are more than 1,600 uh, different uh, badges already close to. and the, issued more than 2 million badges inside the, the enterprise uh, alone. So they have a, a now go further. And this is a capture, a screen capture from uh, yesterday or today. I don't know, I'm not sure, but you can see on the, uh, they have a, a search engine of badges inside the IBM corporation. And you can see the, lear the, the learning type could be badges or certification. And then you have the, the badge type can have certification, experience recognition, learning recognition, or val validation. And those kind of, of separation between kind of training with badges, it's a way to generate value inside the, the organization. They have specific badges also. This one is the uh, design thinking program inside IBM. So they have five kind of 
levels of uh, design thinking expertise inside the organization. So they have the practitioner to the leader and they can, uh, uh, when they when they are working and they are, they are logged in, you can see which person have kind of level and collaborate. So it's easier to, to, to find uh, skills or expert inside the same organization. They have the Adobe program also. Uh, Adobe have a lot of badges about the software learning, but also uh, about educational uh, activities for for teachers, uh, a new new approach like virtual reality for educators. So they they, uh, they motivate people to make uh, training with badge uh, with Adobe badges to be recognized and they can be used as a way to present themselves inside the school or the or program. Another example, it's in, in cybersecurity badges. Uh, they have a lot of badges in that very specific sector. Uh, so they have many university, college, company uh, generate badges. It's not just the IT sector, but it's it's the the um, the most involved sector in badges now it's IT, but it's going very very large in different area right now because we need to uh, skill and reskill and Sarah will talk about that after. So, on an example, it's in, in the uh, hospitality sector. So it's the Galvin restaurant in uh, in UK, and they have this program with City and Gal in uh, Europe about. Uh, training in this big sector of uh, tourism. Uh, it's a sector very tough right now, but they have those linked to uh, uh, on-site training with badges, with school connected in the UK. So it's a way to design uh, a path between uh, schools or learning opportunities to the, uh, to the, uh, to the job. So badges is is for for many years now, but uh, we have a, this is an example of a, a list. You can go to the badge the world a list of uh, project made around badges during the last five years, and you can see it's kind of the Fab Lab network is going everywhere, and it's good for the for the, for the for the for the next uh, step about future work and future learning. So a little bit about badge platform because this is the use of the badges, but then the, the platform, uh, this is the, the, the one thing is very important. Uh, there is, uh, wait. Oh, I, I missed this one. Okay, so we have, uh, I don't have the, the slide, uh, maybe I come, come back later, but uh, in, the, in the badge sector, we have uh, two uh, we have private platform and we have open source platform and also LMS platform. But about the, the Credly was one of the first uh, badge platform at that time after the uh, Mozilla op op opened that uh, that sector. And Credly is kind of the uh, Facebook of uh, badges. So it's very connected uh, and they were uh, acclaim. Also acclaim was set up to, uh, to to try to, to, to work with big company like IBM, Microsoft, uh, Disney, or our big uh, company, but now Credly bought uh, a claim. So it's the same uh, entity now. So it's it's a good platform and very, very well designed, but it's still you are on Credly platform. So it's a international uh, LinkedIn, Facebook platform. There is a lot of example on that platform. And the other side, you have the open source uh, uh, view, it's Badger. So it's it's a server platform to be able to generate a badge system. And uh, this one is, uh, is is connect with a lot of other platform uh, like a Canvas, uh, Moodle, uh, other LMS around the world. Now also with Teams and Microsoft, if you're using Microsoft 365, it's could be used inside that. So because it's open source and a lot of connection between platforms is, is, is possible with Badger. So it, you can customize the front uh, the, the front end or the interface. So at the, the beginning, uh, Mozilla generate, of course, the standard, but also the uh, backpack. So maybe you, you, you hear about the backpack from Mozilla for the badges. It's the way to put your own badges uh, 
around different uh, opportunities. But now it's supported by a badger. So uh, Mozilla transferred the, the badger. So the backpack is now on the badger uh, platform or system. So you, you can see at the left, you have all those opportunity of learning, academia, professional, on-job training, volunteer, etc. And you can share to, to, to go to a new pathway or uh, social media, job opportunity, a portfolio, etc. So like, like uh, Sarah says, uh, in 2015, I, I have to start my first project in badges. So I develop uh, a, a WordPress plugin named Badge Factor. Uh, uh, and this one is uh, a standalone right now. So in that platform, so we are using WordPress uh, CMS with all those uh, other plugins or options. And we can, inside the, the, the Badge Factor plugin, uh, gener manage organization, the manager, the trainer, the learner, and all a, a lot of other features. And we are connect to um, Moodle. Uh, we can connect with WooCommerce about e-commerce. Uh, e uh, but for now, this is the version one, but uh, we're, we're finishing our version 2.0 this, this summer, but this fall is going to be uh, available uh, with, the, with the Badger. So we're going to use Badger uh, on the, on the uh, as a server and we connect the badge factor plugin to be able to generate different kind of uh, uh, template or visual or use of the, the, the badger so the the uh, the user interface will be a badge factor wordpress and with the power and uh, uh, with badger is because both of them are open source so this is the slide I, I, I was supposed to present before, but you can see we have open platform, you have other one, you have uh, badge, uh, badge OS was uh, the, the, the first generation of badge factor a plugin open source and private platform, we had badge craft in a rope, open badge factory in a rope, a badge list, a, a lot of them. And also LMS, so Moodle Canvas edX Tatora, it's a Moodle for enterprise. And we can see, you can see all those certificate uh, product certification uh, with IMS here like there are 23 platform they have the uh, certification of the standard 2.0 of open badges and you can go to the wiki also because we have a, a big wiki around the world about what kind of information so you can go to badge.wiki to see all those uh, explanation so badges in fab lab uh, I still have 10 minutes um, so the, the badges, uh, I'm working with Fab Labs since 2011. Uh, and uh, I think a lot about community about how can we use badges in context of learning or training or social participation in, in, in a Fab Lab. Uh, so I make some research for uh, with them. So in a Fab Lab, we all have the same setup. Maybe it's about tools, people and process. So about tool, we can train, of course, about te technical uh, uh, training. Uh, you can also manage access to a fab lab or to machine or machinery. And also, of course, about security, one of the biggest issue right now. And about the people aspect, we can support and generate portfolio for learner inside our fab lab or our community. We can manage to develop skills or achievement with the, the badges. And the other, the other side is the process. Uh, we, we often use the learn, make and connect approach in different uh, fab labs. So with the badges, we can go very far with the instructional design. Uh, we can generate certification and of course, pathway. Uh, to make, we can recognize uh, learning by doing. We can, uh, we can recognize participation and connect. Of course, uh, the badges could be a, a way to connect uh, training opportunities inside fab labs to the academic or to, to the college or to the, or the, or the on-site uh, professional uh, uh, learning. And we can also have the endorsement. And this part is very interesting because with the badge, we can add information about who is the endorsement of this process. So if one badge is issued by one organization, they can have endorser. So they, they recommend or they, they accept or they, uh, they support that training. So it's a way to connect the dot between 
uh, uh, professional training, social training, uh, uh, very academic or more about uh, social uh, learning space. And of course, with badges, uh, you can design different business model. This is a slide about the example of can, how can we use badges? It was four years ago already, but it's still there. So we can uh, recognize training, can recognize project about storytelling. And we all, we all working hard to documentation, but if you have the badge inside your, your strategy, you, maybe you can generate very short form to add uh, recognition of project and the storytelling is, is embedded in, in one badge. You can of course, pro, uh, uh, promote uh, activity and recognition and also management. So it's professional development inside the Fab Lab uh, organization or sector. So this is a few examples of badges already in the manufacturing sector close to the Fab sector. Uh, so this the Minnesota Dream It Do It is a program about uh, making uh, making cool to be in that sector of manufacturing. Uh, they are they are missing of of, of of people on that field, on that sector. And Sarah will talk about that after. So they generate uh, a program to, uh, to, to, to give scholarship and to be more open about career opportunities inside manufacturing. And it's not a dirty job, and now it's very clean, high tech and every high level uh, skill, but high, high level salary. So they do use the badges to promote that approach. There is, there are many other, uh, training or certification with badges about uh, manufacturing sector. So we have the composite manufacturing technology. It's a uni university. You can have the uh, DASO system uh, 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 about uh, the, the, uh, the uh, designer part as a manufacturer and uh, additive manufacturing. Also, you have IBM to uh, manage supply chain or uh, more about uh, manufacturing solutions, so more about programming software inside that field. You can also have like the uh, Manufacturing Process National War Wood Flooring Association, so very uh, specific uh, sector, but with recognition and certification with the badges. You have Microsoft here as a consultant, on, so we can use Dynamic 365 platform to the supply chain and example on, a, on, on the bio process because like what we see for two days now and in the, in the fab, uh, FabX is that the uh, bio is very present now. So manufacturing in the bio sector is could be very important. So then when we, you have this, this, uh, this badge you, is, is the same setup. So you have the, the picture, you have a, a title, a description, those demonstrate skill inside that training. Uh, and on a claim in Credly, what is very interesting is when you receive a badge or you, or you follow a badge, you can click on on skill, and then you you you, you get uh, pushed to a, a job platform. So you can find a job, connect to skill, then connect to the badges. So that's why we we talk about uh, creating uh, alignment and a, a common language between uh, different. Uh, opportunities of training. This one was the first one uh, like four or five years now about the foundation of 3D printing, but it was a kind of a more about motivational badges. It's a quest approach, but it's the same way to generate value and see the, the, the progress of the, of, of the learner. We have the uh, Fab Lab at, at San Diego also. Uh, may, a few years ago, I have this badge project on LRNG platform a platform you uh, behind is still Badger a server platform. But this one is about training uh, a mix of different, uh, you have to do uh, the uh, learn, make and connect approach. So this one is modern manufacturing fundamentals. It's kind of a 12 hours of different activities. And at the end you have to prove and, and, and give your documentation. And then you receive the, the badge to you on, on your portfolio or you can share it after. And uh, also we have example in France, uh, Le, Le Dome is a science center in France. They, they are a, a living lab and a fab lab also. And they put the badges inside their processes to generate value to those uh, science 
training or science openness in the in the uh, in the area or even in the in the uh, re region. And at Detour, we have this kind of uh, inside focus is a training uh, about be uh, able to uh, be a professional uh, using all those machines. It's uh, it's kind of a, a Fabix, uh, a, a Fab Academy uh, uh, X, and uh, they they could be using uh, the badges. And Sarah will, will present that uh, after. So I'm finished my part. I'm finished my part. And I uh, just want to leave that. Um, before I, I do my, now I'll do both sections together. Uh, yeah. There was a question for you, Jeffwa, way at yes. the top from Jerome that says, why a JSON file can't it be XML? There is some program to execute within the badge. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I cannot answer that question. Uh, I'm not the tech. I have a I have a partner in uh, more about the uh, technology approach. So it's 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 a too specific question for now. But I will take that and I can, if he put the name and uh, uh, in the in the in the uh, in the uh, question, I can answer it and find the, the answer. But I cannot take go further. Maybe you can go to if you want to have the all those data about the uh, standard uh, you can go to wait I'm just going to switch here you can go to the website of open badges so it's openbadges.org and you have all the information about um, the, uh, the the build so you can go to all those information about the de developer part. You can see other uh, way to present the information. So the open badge, they, they just change the, the, the interface. But I, I know they have a, a part about the pro programmer and because it's an open source project. So uh, maybe to extend, I, I cannot find it right away here, but uh, you can issue, we have the, uh, we have the programmer platform on that. And Shafwa, yeah. um, so maybe you just go to openbadge.org. You can have those. I, I can find it when when you present this one part of, of your. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, and Shafwa, I can always um, get back uh, to, um, to to uh, you on that specific question if yeah. if we can't get to it today um of we yeah. can through the mighty networks platform reach out to people um uh Jeff, while someone has a question of is it validated in all countries uh good question uh it's 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 kind of maybe it's the same of as any standard uh they have phase of it's it's interesting, but it's not very uses use. But now it's more and more used in different contexts and different organization. And mm -hmm. with the uh, pandemic, also it is kind of a, of of a, a, a real need to validate uh, training and skill and connect mostly about to connect opportunities in that gig economy or that on. Uh, online and uh, physical uh, to work in the same time we need tools to to connect and to find people or skill or training so for me the badges is the open standard is there uh, it's more structure year after year but we need li like the uh, triangle of trust we need many issuer and biggest issuer and using that standard because if we don't if you don't, we don't have the standard it's going to work about badges but it's not going to be uh, connected and i oh, i missed this one we are you can find uh the last answer for that uh it's re it's recognized uh different part of the world because they are they need it and they are uh, uh they are aware about the, the use of that. So we have to work to, is, is like more incremental uh, development, like a uh, different standard. So you can go to, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, if you wanna find badges, 
like a search engine of badges, you go to uh, share, sorry, share again. You can go to, um, can go to paidrank.org and here you can find badges like kind of a big search engine. So you can go like a collaboration uh, skill you, you search so you can see you have more than close to 2000 example of badges around that description or, or skill but this is a search engine so it could you could find a very structure like Cisco or very uh, openness uh, a person uh, in a small organization generate badges so but here you can find a lot of badges in different contexts and different issuer uh, like Santa Barbara, so you can have the description. So it's a way to see if it's if it's growing. But yes, uh, for me, it's more to could be used in a small city or around a country. The badge is it's very scalable approach to design and connect uh, learning opportunity to job uh, needs. Um, and uh, Jerome raised his hand, so I asked him to unmute. And yes. you uh, want to, because sometimes it is easier than in the chat. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, as I understand it, uh, we can give a badge for almost anything that is knowledge or a competence that anybody can acquire. So um, the question of how to classify them, let's say we are a school or university and we want to implement um, a system that will cover all the possibilities of the school. Um, did the system have been taught? First, I was thinking about using the Dewey system, the one that he, they used to classify the books in the library, but I wonder if there is a, uh, something else or kind of a standard about it. Uh, good question. Uh, of course, about the, the the structuration of organization inside one organization could be a college or a university, of course, example. So they are all departments, they have uh, students, activity association, a sport team inside. So in big organization, they have a lot of people, could be like 2000 people, a uh, lo lot of kind of different activities. So we can manage that, the, the badge platform can manage very uh, many sub organization or sub structure inside a big one. So in the uh, analysis phase of the digital badge uh, planning, you, you have to set up what kind of uh, of uh, type of badges or type of, uh, of uh, certifications you want. This is it about training, this is about recognition of uh, soft skill, or this is about uh, skill development for everybody or school or, or uh, uh, so it's, it's very, uh, I, I like to call that, it's, it's kind of uh, to Swiss maybe in French, but kind of, uh, of uh, a, a very generic tool and design process to adapt to a lot of different approach. And of course, one course could be have at the end a badge just is better than just a, a, a note or, a, or just a result. We have a proof of that, but we can scale for one project, one program, and then one organization. And inside the organization, we have all those kind of use. So uh, there are no standard, uh, but the way to standardize it's to follow all those institution in sector approach. Uh, for two years now, I'm working more about a sectorial approach, about badges, more vertical innovation. So we can start like manufacturing sector. Then we have the politics, we have the association, we have the, uh, the uh, school on that field, we have the program. And the other side, we have the job opportunity. The, so we can, manage to align all those uh, kind of, of de job description, connect to the uh, learning opportunities and the uh, university program, for, for example. So it's, it's a real language between all those uh, approaches. Yeah. Good. Um, I think we'll uh, save more specific questions to the end, but I think, uh, some of them, some of uh, will be answered um, in the next section. 
Um, and so thank you, Jeffwa. That's, that's really helpful. Um, and I'll describe why in our program I um, chose to work with, with Jeffwa and, and with the work that they do. So um, let's make an attempt for me to share the screen. And it's doing this again, where it's giving me this unknown. This is so bizarre because we did it yesterday. And my screen is up. I sent, uh, I emailed my presentation yeah, to you. Yeah, I have them. I have them. Which one uh, do you want to start on. with? Here it goes. It's on, I guess it's on, um, uh zoom yeah would you like it's on security and privacy and so i set that and let's try it now i'm happy to share if it doesn't work sarah yeah no i know but then you're going to have to. Hey, but then works. you're going to have to um, click forward, and that's never fun. Okay, so let me just do the slideshow. Okay, <clears throat> yay! <laughs> it, never, it never ends, and and uh, some of the things that we do like building lasers is so much easier than Zoom <laughs> and, and our computers. So I'm gonna do a really, really quick, I'm gonna go through this first section really quickly because it is the, um, a, a talk that um, some of the people here have already heard, but I feel like for the group, it's important to know the background, you know, of why we're doing this. And so as many of you know, um, manufacturing and I was particularly interested in digital fabrication and manufacturing and um, when I grew up there were lots of factories that were thriving and our communities were really vibrant and strong and alive and um, and then things changed the world changed we became uh, a global uh, community and our factory started to look like this. And this is a factory in Youngstown, Ohio. And we went through quite a long time of things where we had um, uh, really a shift in, in how the world was, was organizing around manufacturing. And um, things started to change as um, digital technologies came in. And if you think about things like the Teslas and iPhones and exploring space, um, it's really still the people who have to make those things. And it's really human beings that that are, are an integral part. It's not just the, the tools, as we keep saying in the fab community, it's not just about the tools, it's also about the communities and the people. And so as these new digital tools started to become more important in the world, we started to really see changes. And um, right down the street from that bombed out, you know, uh, abandoned factory, we now uh, have in Youngstown, Ohio, the headquarters of America Makes. And America Makes is the National Additive Manufacturing Institute that was created by the Obama administration in 2012. And if you could see through that storefront window, um, it is filled with every kind of 3D printer that you could ever imagine. And it's really um, a showcase of, of these new digital technologies. Um, just in the same community. And so what has happened is our blue collar jobs have become digital jobs. 
And Ginny Rometty, the CEO of IBM, calls them new collar jobs. When Mr. Trump was elected, she wrote a, a letter to him that basically said, we're thrilled you want to bring back manufacturing, but we don't want those old coal miner jobs or steel mill jobs. We want new collar jobs that integrate all of the very cool technologies that are available today. Um, as uh, most of you know, because I'm preaching to the choir in this, uh, there's a huge skills gap. There's a lot of people who um, do not have the skills to fill the open jobs. Um, even though uh, the before the pandemic, there were a lot of uh, there was low unemployment. Uh, in fact, there were still a lot of jobs open because people could not find employees with the kinds of skills they needed to do these new color digital jobs. The World Economic Forum predicts that by 2022, which is only in a couple of years, we will probably lose about 75 million jobs to automation, but um, they estimate that 133 million jobs, which is almost double that number, are going to need new workers. They're going to need workers with these new digital skills that we don't have today. Um, and I wanna, wanted to preface this about the digital badges, because there's a real reason that I, that I worked on this project. Um, uh, a lot of uh, schools had asked me about helping to create a two-year curriculum in digital fabrication, which um, the company that I had sold, I owned a, a laser machine tool company, um, and uh, we had helped develop a program uh, in, um, in Maryland. And people kept saying, can you make a, a program for us? And I thought, well, I don't know what you need in your community. I mean, I helped build a program that was really about the, um, the work, workers that we needed. And I thought, I really need to um, find out what, what are the real skills that manufacturers are looking for. So because I came from industry, it was very easy for me to interview uh, 200 manufacturers, they ranged in size from startups to Fortune 10, so people from uh, IBM, of course, um, GE, Boeing, Apple, um, lots of big companies, uh, as well as small companies and across industries. So everything from uh, uh, medical device manufacturing to um, to consumer goods. And the number one skill that 100% of them basically told me they wanted was problem solving skills. And uh, the problem is that the technology and the machines are changing so quickly that they really need people who can make the machines work. And they need people who have those kinds of skills where they can go in and solve a problem and not be waiting for the repairman to come while a production line is down. And we all know the cost to a company when production is down. Um, the second skill they said they needed was hands-on experience. And um, uh, things, uh, like being able to repair things, uh, uh, repair tools, repair machines, and and really be able to to get into the um, the nitty gritty of of what's happening on the factory floor. Um, they also, of course, are looking for digital skills. Um, in particular, there was a lot of. Um, uh, need for CAD design, which will make so happy. Um, a, a lot of uh, uh, need for AI and AR, um, as well as machine learning and predictive analytics. Um, and because 3D printing is, is starting to really become ubiquitous in manufacturing, they were looking for uh, people with experience in 3D printing, particularly on the service side. Um, in uh, all of us who, who are in Fab Labs have, have seen pictures like this or, or seen actual machines uh, where we end up with spaghetti and not with the tools that we were trying to print. And uh, it's a real problem in industry because there isn't the historical experience of how do you fix these machines. Um, and 
after I did this research, um, Sherry and the Fab Foundation uh, worked with the National Governors Association and, and a, another nonprofit called FHI 360 on um, disruptive technologies. And, and what really became clear was that these technologies are invading every industry. So when you talk to Walmart, they're now using robotic cleaners. And, um, you know, the point is that the machines really don't function by themselves, that they need people who can actually um, repair the machines and keep them functioning. Um, and, and so actually we're more uh, cobots. We're working in collaboration with machines and uh, not in isolation or either or. And that's partially why the uh, World Economic Forum numbers are where they are because um, the machines uh, really do uh, the heavy lifting, but we still need the humans to do the innovation. Um, so what I concluded from all of this when I got done was that trained people are the key to the digital transformation that's happening across industries and that what they were looking for are actually what we learn in fab labs, that um, they're looking for skills beyond technology specific knowledge. They're looking for identification and solving of authentic problems, which was the most important thing. They're looking for critical thinking, design thinking, all the kinds of things that we do on a daily basis. And um, while I thought I was going to write a two-year curriculum, I realized that a new kind of training was needed, um, that the employers were looking for something skill-specific. They were looking for a set of very specific kinds of, of skills like problem solving, and that the students had really changed. And they're, they're, they're wanting really engaging, affordable, time-effective careers and something that's also transformable. And we wanted to be able to provide something uh, new and different. And when I got done all of this research, what really jumped out at me were digital badges um, because they were a new way to certify skills. They were very specific to the skill, but they also demonstrated problem solving. And I'll talk a little more uh, um, well, actually, I can just say this now. <clears throat> so when I when I looked at it, I thought, um, you know, if people want problem solving as the skill, <clears throat> we have to be able to verify that the person can solve problems. And so the ability to complete a project and to document that project in a portfolio is very powerful. And it's a very powerful way for an employer to look at the skills that a student has instead of just saying, okay, I've got some piece of paper that says I have X degree, we can actually show them that the, the, the uh, potential employee has solved problems, that they, they actually know what to do. And we do that through um, the documentation process. Um, I looked at a number of platforms and I looked at Credly. And so to do, do the, the test of this, in my lab in New Mexico, I worked with the Santa Fe Community College Continuing Education Department and they signed up for Credly, which is a commercial platform. And um, my complaint about it was that the back end, the portfolio part of it was really kludgy. And actually I was talking to IBM not long ago and they were saying, oh no, it works pretty well. And then it came out that they spent a million dollars on customizing the platform for their needs. Because what you get, it's kind of like any other canned software versus custom software. And what you get, you know, what you see is what you get. And I wanted something that was a little different. I wanted something where the, the portfolio was really central to the entire badge. And that was the reason that I wanted a customized program. And you can either do that internally in-house, um, but I just didn't have the resources to do that. And I thought it'd be much 
faster and easier to work with Jeffroy and his group on his team um, who already had expertise in the area. He already understood the, the, um, the requirements that, that uh, you must have for the, the platform, uh, for the, um, the international standards. And I didn't have to learn that. And since we all have too many jobs today in this day and age, um, it was really valuable to me to, to use a group that had that expertise and allowed us to develop um, a customized platform, although we, we didn't do it in-house, but we did it in collaboration with Jeff Wise Group. Um, and so going back to that first, second slide of the, the factory, you know, it really seems to me that this new color workforce who, who has these digital skills um, are really the key to the economic success in our communities. And I really believe that they can bring back the middle class because these are people who actually can make a decent wage and support their families um, without the uh, extraordinary expense of a four-year degree. And yes, if you want to be a, um, a university professor like Neil, or if you want to be a brain surgeon or rocket scientist at Los Alamos, you must get a college degree. But for many people, um, you can have an engaging job using digital skills uh, like digital fabrication and, and earn a decent living. And I, and I really can't emphasize enough that, that I believe that this is very important to the social fabric of, of our world. Um, I'd like to point out too that since then, and since um, Lass and I and the National Governors Association um, project happened, the White House had formed a task force and Ginny Rometty, whose, whose photograph you saw earlier from IBM, as well as Tim Cook from Apple and a number of other tech executives, um, were on a task force, unfortunately, with Ivanka Trump running it, who uh, sadly doesn't have the weight. Uh, a lot of people in, in the manufacturing community don't see her as someone with manufacturing experience. So I feel like it came, it, it didn't come from a place that uh, of value, but um, they recommended that federal jobs now value skills over degrees in, in their hiring practices. And I think that is a huge move. Um, and it says to me a lot about the, um, the work that um, Ginny Rometty has done. Um, uh, Ginny told me when I was doing my research, the third of the IBM employees are not um, have skills that do not require college degrees. And on the other hand, we do see the, the badges as pathways to college degrees, and many schools talk about accepting badges and um, using the badges in, in a stackable way in order to offer certificates and to um, give kids a head start. And as Blair often talks about, as Blair Evans at Insight Focus talks about, you know, we really need for people to explore what they really want to do. And the badge is a great way to do that. Um, I'm going to have to change my slide deck and it looks like there might be questions. Uh, maybe not. No questions. I think it was just people saying they were leaving. Oh, okay. And thank you. Yes, because the the original information said that there was we were one hour, but we were actually two hours. Thank God, because of the technical our technical difficulties. Um, and so, what I want to talk about is how. Um, uh, there are uh, how you offer um, badges in your um, in your own lab. I'm going to get back to Zoom and share my screen. And let's see if it goes. 
Yes, there it is. Let's see if it'll let me go to uh, the slideshow. Start. Okay. Can you see the screen? We can see it, yes. Okay. Yes, I do see it. But it is not doing the slideshow. Okay. Can you see it now? Looks great. Perfect. Okay. So, um, you know, how to offer the badges in, in your own lab. Um, you know, there's there, as we've talked about, as Jeff Wah and I have talked about, there are um, options. You can sign up for a commercial platform. Um, you can also um, engage you can either do it in house with your own software team if you have a large enough group or a, a qualified enough group, or you could engage like we did with someone like Jeff Wa who um, uh, can help you through that process. Um, the other option uh, is to participate in the network that that we formed um, and our our network uh, was a group of um, fab labs and maker spaces and schools and colleges that were particularly interested in these new education models. And this is a list of our group. Um, and we we are um, I think able to. Um, work together in and it's been just a, a really great experience to to have the group um you know really bring their areas of expertise the rain county community college brought some great expertise in terms of subscriptions and it's been um really an, an, a nice community and so we um uh our collaboration um, with um, industry and, and, and academics. And so our board of directors, partially because of my background in industry, are people who um, are primarily in digital fabrication, um, 3D printing, laser cutting, um, machining, uh, and uh, and we collaborate with a lot of organizations. So our first uh, digital badges were funded by America Makes, the Additive Manufacturing Institute that I mentioned earlier. We're working with Youngstown State University in Ohio on an IT workforce accelerator um, that I'll also talk about in more detail later. Um, we're through the generosity of Sherry and the Fab Foundation, we're working with uh, the Prakash Lab, on um an n95 on the n95 material project that he talked about yesterday the los alamos national lab and i don't know if if ross munchausen is still on he was on yesterday morning uh developed with us safety badges and so um i we have a really nice um uh community that collaborates and that is helping uh bring this to to fruition in a in a much needed kind of way um, our digital badges um, were uh, developed by my team, partially internally funded and partially with um, funding from America Makes and Los Alamos. And um, it was the uh, member host organizations of the New Color Network that vetted the, um, the badge curriculum and the materials. What I discovered um, at Digi5Con a few years ago was that the, um, so the badges are really just a verification. And I had been thinking that most of the schools had materials that we would just develop a curriculum that they have to teach to. Their own curriculum um, could, 
had to at least match ours. And if it went beyond, uh, that was fine, but it had to at least match or, or um, exceed uh, the skills that we were working on. And, um, and what I discovered is that a lot of the fab labs didn't have materials and additive. There's a lot of good materials out there for things like CNC machining, but for additive, there's quite a lot of junk out on the internet, on YouTube. And so we internally funded a, um, uh, a materials, uh, teaching materials. And so we, uh, had, uh, we have a video series uh, for for FDM and SLA, and so. Um, but for most of them, uh, if if the group already has, like, if it's a community college that already has materials that they they are happy with and they like, as long as it covers the curriculum, um, they can use whatever ever materials they are happy with. The badge is um, uh, 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 earned uh, by the project, and the project is documented. And um, it is the individual teacher in the in the badge program who determines whether or not the the badge is um, acceptable, or or the project is acceptable enough to earn the badge. And this is just a few of the, um, the topics. So IT, uh, IBM is allowing us, since all of the machine tools we use now require IT, IBM is giving us um, free access to their digital badges, as well as their pre-apprenticeship programs. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we're doing things in digital fabrication and design thinking with Los Alamos and in safety, um, in entrepreneurship, and, and then professional development. Um, one of the things that we offer to our members or to our, not just members, but our community um, was we, we will create a badge for um, the people associated with us who, um, attend this today. So it'll be a professional development badge for not just today, but this week at FabEx Live um, as another uh, credential and a, a recognition of, of what people are doing. But they're um, uh, very skill specific um, and short in, in duration, which is the key. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, that. So our uh, Additive badges are, because um, uh, you have to start somewhere, are in FDM and SLA. Um, and uh, our badges combine into a master badge. And I'll, I'll go through those later. And the, as I talked about earlier, I needed a, an easier badge proof platform. And, the, and what I very much like away the, about the way that Jeffwa has um, put this together is that um, the student uploads their, uh, their portfolio and keeps their portfolio up to date in the Credly platform. It was external and it was just really kludgy and it was another job for my staff. And, and we just really, you know, and it's one of those things where it always goes to the bottom of the list when, when it takes too much time and, and you don't want to do it. And um, the, I, I'm hoping this really expedites our, our system and it, for the ones that we have uh, entered so far, it seems to be a much better uh, system than what I had before. Sarah, um, a few people have some questions in the chat. I'm not sure if you want to go through them now or kind of come back to them later. Um, I, let's go through it to see if any of this answers them. And Sounds good. So, yeah, because sometimes I find the questions get answered along the way. Um, and so, for example, the master badge for the FDM 3D printer operator um, comprises five badges. It comprises design for 3D printing, fundamentals of FDM, CAM, post-processing and troubleshooting and maintenance. 
And so if you get each of those, then it translates into a master badge, which has a little bit more um, uh, currency, which is the term that the badge people use. It has a little more currency for both the employer and for the student. Um, the uh, Fab Lab Safety Digital Badge, uh, we did in collaboration with Los Alamos and we'll start offering that in September. Um, the design for 3D printing, I was able to um, uh, turn into a, a virtual badge with because of coronavirus. We used to teach this in person. And I found a way that we had our, because it was designed, it was not a 3D printing class. Um, we had the, um, our interns in the lab, come into the lab with, with social distancing and 3D print the, um, the designs in order for the iteration of the design to happen. And they photograph or video them. And then we're able to um, either deliver them to people locally, or if they choose not to come get it, we sanitize them first. Um, but if they can't come to get it, we're able to um, show them the pictures and then they're able to iterate their design. And of course, the other topics like lab safety, you don't want to be blowing up your lasers and setting them on fire. So anyway, that was still already going to be um, uh, more of a virtual um, experience. Uh, and so we do have quite a few that we can do virtually where we don't need to be in the labs. And, and I wasn't quite sure if it was going to work, but it's turned out for the design for 3D printing that we did this summer, we've had students in Boston, and thank you, Stephanie, who was on, I don't know if you're still on, um, for sending students to that one, and then in San Diego, and in, um, uh, in, in various places in New Mexico, as opposed to just in Santa Fe. So that has worked out um, better than I ha had hoped, and, and we do the lecture through GoToMeeting. Um, we're looking at, at the fall um, doing some with very small, limited class size of like four to five people. Um, and I think that there might be some ways to, to make that work. I have a very large new space. Um, and I think if we spread it out, um, we may be able to make that that's going to be an experiment. Um, the model for the, uh, the group is that the, um, the coursework, and I'm, I'm not talking about the virtual uh, ones, I'm talking about the, in general, um, the coursework is done at the local um, facility. Um, during coronavirus, it might be a mix of local and online, a hybrid model. And then the hands-on project is 100% done in, in the local facility. Um, the uh, IBM-related digital badges are all uh, done virtually. Um, and what we end up providing to our network are a, a number of practical things like the teaching materials and, and you know, the platform that you don't have to develop and the, and the community. But I, but I think that the more valuable thing is that I, I spent a lot of time researching this and uh, several of the schools in Chippewa showed um, the uh, badges from Colorado. And what they said is, and what several other uh, community colleges and schools said was that they just didn't have enough credibility. They didn't have enough currency uh, to get a badge from, you know, my little my little lab in the middle of, you know, rural New Mexico. Really didn't have a lot of carry a lot of weight for employers, maybe maybe Los Alamos, because they know us, but um, you know, for employers or particularly for out-of-state employers. And we thought that by having a community, a network that was throughout North America, that we could, um, we'd have much more weight. And for, 
for both the employers and for the students that students would want to be in the program. And also it was more portable because if you started in at Lorain County Community College and you moved to Baltimore, you could finish the badges at um, the Community College of Baltimore County. So you had a little bit of portability that went with um, everything else. So I, I think the real value is not in, in the what we provide, I think it's much more in, in the currency of the badge. Um, this is a beautiful uh, ring that uh, one of our uh, uh, digital badge students produced of the Taos Pueblo. And, um, but uh, our classes are typically six weeks in length and the average badge fee is 200 or 250 dollars depending upon what the class is and clearly the the hands-on um has the um i should go back uh the um in this in the fee is the lab fee and so the local group uh charges the lab fee and the local group um determines what that fee is and uh and then the network handles uh the 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 actual digital badge fee but 66 percent two-thirds of that fee goes back to the partners who is teaching the class and um uh and then they set their their lab fee locally and then the one third covers us maintaining the platform where the badges are held and doing all of the admin part for for the students and then doing all the associated stuff the professional development and the um uh, uh marketing of the program um we had uh, a request from several people for doing a subscription model because they were schools. And as I said earlier, the uh, community college in, at Lorraine County worked on um, uh, figuring out what to, what to charge and how to do this. And so um, they can do a subscription for 50 badges. Um, and uh, and the lab fee for them, just as with the other, they handle locally anyway. If there was school, there's not going to be a lab fee. So the Dayton Regional STEM School um, uses this model because obviously at a high school you can't uh, charge the students. I guess you could do it as a club after school, but if you're going to do it as part of the curriculum, there had to be um, a methodology for for that. And and then we. Um, we have a um, uh, an annual an annual fee for the hosts to be members, and um, and then we individual membership is free. Um, so that's our badges. We also just quickly we have uh, are working on a registered apprenticeship with IBM through the U.S. Department of Labor for an additive manufacturing specialist that will launch in the fall. Um, it's a learn while you earn. They will earn badges at no cost and have a starting salary of $38,000 a year that we're getting through a grant. Um, and then upon completion, they can stay on the job. And this is through our sister uh, company that um, do contract manufacturing in order to support our lab and um and after that will come uh, a kind of a general digital fabrication um apprenticeship and then a photonics and i'm hoping through the general digital fabrication uh one that we can uh use fab academy and um in collaboration with the badges um and these were both made possible by ibm and the youngstown state university it uh workforce accelerator and and we're really excited about that program because there are no registered apprenticeships in additive manufacturing there's also none in photonics interestingly enough and lasers and optics are everywhere but there's still not a, a an apprenticeship in in that category um, and as Jeff Wan mentioned, 
you know, one of the things I'd really like to see is that um, we can create through the badge platform um, sort of a LinkedIn for new color jobs where if a, an employer is looking for somebody who knows how to run a CNC machine, they, they can find them and not just find them, but see, see their badges and see uh, what their skills are and then go into the back end and see the, um, the portfolios. Um, and so um, it's free to sign up and this is the website and I think that's it. I thought I was gonna put a little more on, on the uh, platform, but I, Jeff Y, I didn't get there. But I think that gives us a, an overview. Um, so, Let's see. Um, Sarah, there were... I'm trying to see where they start. <laughs> where the questions? Oh, where the questions start? Um, I think it's it's around the. Where is it? Yeah, probably how is consistency in grading ensured across those who approve the project projects for the badge? That's um, where it would start. There we go. Um, and so part of that is, is uh, meeting the curriculum. So part of that is in ensuring that um, the requirements of the curriculum are demonstrated. And then the other part of it is in the professional development that we do with the host sites. And so um, most of the sites right now I know and I've worked closely with and as we've started to bring in some outside groups that, I, that are not Fab Labs, I, uh, we have been working with them one-on-one -on -one, um, in order to ensure that the type of teaching is the same so that um, we did have one group that had not utilized um, project-based learning and we do true project-based learning where it is authentic problems. And so we brought in, um, uh, oh, I won't think, uh, Rich Lair, uh, who some of you know from DigiFabCon, uh, who's now in Chile, and we did a webinar with him. Um, and then I ended up working with a couple of the people individually. So I think a lot of it is going to depend upon um, really the community um, uh, standards of the teachers, um, which is really important to me. Um, and uh, does, does that mostly answer your question, Julia? Yeah, it does, Sarah, but I, so I just wanted to make sure I understand. So with the new caller platform, um, anyone issuing a badge from this platform would then work directly with the, with the platform managers, which is, which is you and Jeff Rao, right? Um, me and Jeff Wah and my team. So I I have a new person starting who's who's really um, uh, going to also be monitoring isn't the right word, but um, you know I really want us to have a close relationship. I don't want it to be that people are kind of out on their own and feel lost. I want it to be that people feel like we work together and 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 that we work to make the program successful that it's not just that you know we throw you out there and i really want it to be um and you know i owned a, i i owned a lean factory and so much of the success of the quality control in my in my factory was the communication between our group and so i'd really like to see us hopefully be able to maintain that. And, and I, we will work hard to make that happen. Thank you. So to answer Jerome's question, um, there's no reason why it can't be open internationally. It just happened to be that we were in North America 
um, and that's our nonprofit is is an North American group, but I don't, you know, there's no, nothing prohibiting it except for maybe language. And um, the woman who designed the Taos uh, Pueblo ring is actually going to be translating all of our um, materials into Spanish. And I hope to have that in the fall. Um, I suppose that between Chepois and I, we could probably translate it into French. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, certainly, um, it would depend upon whether the group could utilize either Spanish or, or at this point, Spanish or English. Um, let's see. So there is a question. <clears throat> could you speak a little more about the training of teachers who provide the digital fabrication learning opportunities at the community-based and high school level? Um, uh, oh, okay. So um, what we have done, um, particularly for the high school level, is on-site training of the teachers. And so, um, because it was just getting started and I wanted to kind of set the standard, when the Dayton Regional STEM School um, signed up, I spent um, two days working with their teachers. Um, there are STEM schools, so they're very um, savvy about the equipment but I really wanted to work with them on the um, project-based learning component, which they, which they did know a lot about. Um, but even then, you know, even for people who have done project-based learning, um, it was really interesting because there was a guy in the back of the room who at the coffee break came up to me and said, um, I'm sorry that I seem distracted. He had this pile of papers in front of him and he said, I'm grading. Um, CAD designs. And I said to him, why are you doing that? Why isn't the class doing it? You know, why isn't it an iterative group project? And uh, he went back and tried it and emailed after I left and emailed it and said, God, you saved me so much work, but the kids learned so much. And I think even for those of us who do um, project-based learning, sometimes we do need to, you know, step back and, and think about um, uh, uh, how, how we are working. And, and so I think they, they found that really valuable. And um, as, it, as the program grows, what I envision is that, you know, it won't be just me and, and that we will regionally have groups that um, are able to work with with the community based and the high school level, but also, but also with the college level. I mean, um, I see so many community colleges with old school, you know, shop teachers who um, need need to move their teaching into the twenty first century. So, um, I I don't think it's just for the um, just for the uh, the lower grade levels. Um, there was a, a question back here um, of someone who was asking about the uh, the, the um, is there a way to have a global issuer that spans fab labs to increase trust over individual fab labs being the issuer? Um, the issuer in our case is the North American Digital Fabrication Alliance. So it is the 10 fab labs and colleges that, and this is to Pete. Um, and so the, um, we felt like, as I said way back, uh, we felt like to have one fab lab, like my lab, because I originally wanted to offer the badges and as I researched it, I thought, well, I don't have enough credibility um, in my little college. I, I want it 
I want the badge to be issued by a much larger group. And our organization is a recognized organization in the MIT Fab Lab Network. So if you go under the uh, fablabs.io, um, we're listed in, in the under organizations. Um, I haven't, um, I didn't have the bandwidth to really think about an international organization, but that's certainly, you know, it's doable. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, as I said before, I think that actually we could, um, we could definitely, if someone wants to join, I mean, you don't have to be in North America. We just have, our group just happened to start there. And, you know, hopefully we can, we can yeah. help more. Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. So, uh, yeah, we have uh, other questions, but uh, we have maybe 15 minutes more to the end mm -hmm. of the, to the presentation. I have a small uh, presentation about uh, how to uh, how to integrate that. So can can we switch to the activity part is is going to be a small one, but just to give some tools for uh, the uh, participants. Sure. Let me just answer the other few questions. Okay. Um, Melvin asked about the alignment to NGSS and Common Core. Um, we did not do a formal alignment. Um, some of our group uh, were, who, were, who were teachers involved in that um, did some informal alignment. Um, and since we are not, um, uh, you know, our focus wasn't really K through 12, I wasn't as concerned about that, but that is something that we've looked at um, beefing up in the future. And then um, the process to add new badges. Um, basically, the process to add new badges is either people come to us um, or I have an idea or somebody in the group has an idea for a badge. Um, and then our group, that's it. So um, the, the list of fab labs that you saw at the beginning um, was a group that is the group that um, reviews the the um, need for the badge and then looks at the the proposed curriculum and um, and then we go from there. So I think we covered most of the questions, but you have our emails and so we'll just jump over Jeff Wah, to your activity. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. So it's going to be a short one because we have a, not a lot of time, but it, as uh, Sarah said, we, we, we are be uh, all the week. I, I will be there online and we can talk after for sure or even later. Uh, share my screen. So uh, it's a small, more about the how can you integrate the badges inside your activities? Of, uh, you can go, as Sarah said, in, in a network with kind of the approach is very a uh, network approach with, uh, but you can also start small or use that, or if you have budget to implement your own platform, because at the end, if we use the same standard, we can share and import and export badges between different platforms. That's why it's, the clue is to be in the standard, to be sure to have uh, valid, validate uh, stuff, but also perinity to the uh, to the certification we, we, we give or we uh, issued. Uh, so just to answer the question to Jerome, uh, you can go to the Open Badge 2.0 specification. Uh, it's on that link here. I will post it on the uh, on, on the chat uh, very fast. Uh, sorry, the chat is uh, too many boxes in the same. Okay, where where am I? So I'm okay. I cannot see the chat. Sorry, where's the chat? Uh, I'll post it for you. Don't worry yeah. about it. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you, thank you. But it's it's, it's no going to problem. be at the end of the place. So uh, very quickly, uh, of course, uh, Fab Labs is a perfect place to be an uh, 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 to generate active learning. So about this team approach, this STEM approach. You can go to the project-based learning, design-based or inquiry-based learning. Uh, it's a perfect place to develop skills uh, to the new century, but it's the same skill 
that before, there's just more and more skills. And of course, a good tool to evaluate. In the STEAM approach, of course, a lot of organizations generate uh, lessons and they all put categories and career path and grades. So this is an example of uh, Simmons uh, STEAM day. So you can go and find a lot of activities a STEAM approach can use in your file lab. In the manufacturing sector also, you have uh, the discovery education, brings a lot of, of uh, lessons uh, in that, that topic. And of course, we have the Fab Foundation who will generate the Scope DF project where they generate uh, and collaborate to share uh, different educational activities, uh, K-12 and more. Uh, and they design or they create a first manifesto or the Fab I Can statements where you have six domains, so design, programming, electronics, modeling, fabrication, safety. All those have three grades of, uh, of mastering, uh, design one, two, three levels. Uh, so when you design badges, you have two example here. This one is the drone design to the 9, 12 grade. Uh, you can see this, this is the, uh, the uh, sheet of the of the activity and you can see on, on the on the left all those categories uh, is the same with badges we have me, me, uh, metadata behind so we can connect and and navigate between uh, tools or topic or subject but also we have these standards and when it's arrived to generate badges or uh, um, or uh, ecosystem of badges uh, is, is, is the same uh, as uh, Sarah said it's about scaling so we are we're living in a network design strategy now and more than ever because we're now very, uh, very uh, fr fragile about economics, about the job training. So the badges could be one of the layer of that, uh, of, of that uh, resilience of our societies or even our, our uh, people. So the standard is very important and when you design training if you use the standard 5 by can for example and then a standard to to issue certifications then we can generate trust inside the, the, the network so of course fab foundation is the biggest network but then you have regional network is it's a big movement for many years now about the uh, south Amer america network the north america the europe brand the, the french one etc at the end it's okay because we need to connect the dot but we need to go very deep inside a, a small uh, group of people but with the same uh, mindset so quick two steps uh, about question uh, when we implement badges uh, project inside an organization it's a simple uh, it's kind of a simple product management uh, process so you have the business analysis then you have the, the phase of instructional design to the, the badge setup and structure and the other part the, the, the platform you have to implement the platform about the, the design and then you we do the integration the, the training for the, the, the badges uh, and the all those uh, roles inside the platform and they have the kickoff uh, and it's uh, all some after 10 projects it's more and between six and 12 months project and between 15,000 to 35,000 budget for different uh, classic or more complex project for now but at the end there are many uh, companies offering that uh, the, the thing is with uh, open source platform uh, we we don't pay for the number of badges. When you have the system, so the platform kind of badge factor plugin, you can generate many badges as you want. It's 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 a generator of badges. It's not one badge per payment, but this is you have to invest in the infrastructure for that. So you have to choose or go for first by your own uh, in a platform uh, and a share platform, and then go to uh, produce your own platform. So I will, uh, the last thing, it's, this is a paper. I tried to do training online. It's very dif different than uh, on a, on a, on face to face. So I prepare a PDF, a dynamic PDF you can use just to have a reflection. And uh, where is the, I'm searching for the uh, chat. Where's the chat? Sorry about that. I will stop sharing just to go to, to the to chat room. Okay, there we go. So in the chat, I, I put the link to 
download that file. It's a PDF. It's a dynamic PDF. So you can click on it. And uh, we'll wait a few seconds to be sure you can see it. And uh, on that PDF, you can see all the information. When we design one badge, so it could be like uh, laser machine training level one. So you have to generate information to put in the in the badge description all uh, and all, all other information on the on, on, on the data. So I will just show you. I think I have this one. So not this one. No. So can somebody said if it's working? Can you open it and edit text on inside? Yes, I was able to do that. Okay, perfect. So the thing is, uh, that's a very first discovery tool, but in every badge platform, you have to uh, generate badges with the same set of information because we're using the, uh, the, the standard open badges. Uh, so this is the, the same. So this is, you can save and generate many as you want, but of course you have the, the, the left side is the visual design. So of course you have to design a, a picture, a, a badge, or like a scout or other one. You can see a lot of example inside badge rank uh, ser uh, search engine. You, do you need a title, of course, of the, of the badge, the description. So you can put what is the, uh, uh, what is the opportunity or what is represent uh, the, this badge. Uh, the criteria is very important in, in the standard. So what is the criteria to obtain and to claim and to receive that badge? You can have very easy uh, uh, badge or very complex badge with a lot of things to, to produce and to, and to, and to share to the, uh, to the issuer to receive it. The framework here or the uh, is it's kind of fab I can can be used, but it's all those uh, mm -hmm. uh, job sector and all those fr framework about the government, the school you have to set up. And if you have a framework, your badge is going to be more va valuable because it's attached to a, a already a, a network there and already a standard inside job sector or technology or etc. And then you have to choose I think, the. I think, Jeffwa, that for yes. us the I can statements were were um, from the Fed Foundation were helpful, but we had to make them so specific to mm -hmm. the particular because the mic because of the micro certifications being such a very small element, and so we we use them as a guide. And we have about two minutes, so. Yeah, it's okay, I, I, I finish in, uh, in one. Okay. I finish. <laughs> now, I just to, to say frameworks, yeah, it, it could be more than one. So you have one about the fab aspect and the other one about the industry aspect. And then to the school you're working with about generate quality or recognition. Uh, then you have the evaluation mode, of course, what kind of evaluation you want to put to obtain that badge could be very simple or a lot of steps like uh, an interview with with uh, with kind of uh, uh, a test or quiz or anything you want then you have to identify kind of proof or traces you want to obtain and then you can choose to push or not on the on the badge to the person so it could be an uh, embedded or not in the uh, final certification and of course, at the end, you can see uh, the badge as part of a, of, of a pathway, of a context, of a, of a sequence. And then we have to work together as an ecosystem. So in your sector, on your uh, city or your uh, network, you have to structure and have a co-designing part to be able to structure uh, a, a path between this specific train or badge to your uh, place to another and other uh, partners. So it's, it's a small uh, document just to reflect on that. And we, we can go further if you have question, we can go uh, in the, in, uh, outside of that meeting for sure. But uh, this is kind of tool to uh, imagine the, the next step for your badge system. That sounds great. I'm just gonna put back up the slide with our contact information and on, um, you know, questions always come up 
uh, as we are um, thinking about a presentation and please feel free to drop, drop us a line and ask more questions and I, I can send more materials like I can send yeah. an example um, of the I can statement that we used, for example, with one of the curriculum. So a curricula. Um, and also, sorry, you, you, you can uh, ask uh, to, to talk to, with, with us uh, directly on the FabX platform. So we, mm -hmm. we because mm -hmm. we're, we're here all the week, so we can answer uh, directly in, in, the, in the platform also. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate all of you who uh, came came today and um, I think it is a really exciting project and I hope that we hear from you. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Thank you, Chef Wa. Thank you, Sarah. So yeah. see you very soon. Oh. Very, very, very soon. Salut, Marc, encore, encore là. Salut, Marc. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. It was really nice. Really nice to see you. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of work. We've worked on this a long time. Oh, I and, know. And put a lot of thought into it. And, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it always takes longer than it, than you think. <laughs> like everything. Like everything. I, I know. <laughs> bye Thank bye. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye Sarah. So, are we done? Thank you, Alitia, also. Thank you for that. Yes, for being for taking care of us. <laughs> yes. No problem. I was trying to keep up. I'm just not as fast as I wish I was sometimes. <laughs> uh, okay, no thank worries. you. No worries. And those those resources were fantastic. Um, I was trying to like keep notes for myself as well. Oh, uh, I can send you the presentations. That would that would be awesome. Do I have your email? Um I, I, I'll include it in the in the chat. It's just Alethea at fabfoundation.org. Okay. That was very nicely done. I really like the um, connection to the ICANN statements. Nice job. Oh. Melvin yeah. helped create some of the fab ICANN statements as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you for that. Good, good job also. Yeah, it's just... Okay, bye-bye. I have to go now. So see you uh, after today or tomorrow for sure. Yeah, we'll email. Yeah, for sure. Bye, Sarah. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye. I was bye. trying to escape. <laughs>